Welcome back. This is lesson two of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session six. And in this lesson, we will take a look at the credit risk scoring data set and we will prepare it and we will clean it a little bit. So this is the data set again. And we already took a look at the columns they, uh, the, there are in this data set. Uh, we took a look at the CSD file. What we can do now is we can download this data set. For that, I use uh, VGET as well to execute that. So now it downloads the data set. And uh, so this is how it looks like. We already saw it in the previous uh, video. So we saw how this looks like. And this head, uh, by the way, if you don't know, so it just looks at the first 10 rows of a text file and just shows them. This is a Linux tool. So if you're on Windows, you might not have it, but this is uh, the same as dataframe.head in pandas, um, but for text files. So it shows what kind of information we have here in this file. And let's load this with pandas. Let's see, see. Let me check if I imported pandas actually. So it's CSV data, and then let's write it to data frame. Then it shows us the first five rows. And we can already see that for some of the variables, so first of all, they are they start with capital letter. We can lowercase this. But what we call also see that um, some of the categorical variables uh, like status, home, marital, meaning marital status, records, job, uh, what else? Yeah, these variables. So they are categorical variables, but they are encoded as numbers. So one, two, one, two, two, three, so, which is not very nice. We want them to contain text to understand uh, what this status one is or what this marital two is and so on. So first let's um, lowercase the column names. We have seen many times how we do this. So now they are lowercase. So now we need to figure out what to do with these categorical variables. And if we go to the original data set, there is uh, some R code that shows how to pre-process this data. You don't have to understand R, but let's take a look at this. So first we see that there are some missing values. We will see them a bit later. So and these missing values are coded as a bunch of nines. So we need to do something with them. Yeah, so here they are working with categorical variables. And here they say that, um, so for status, there is status that is good and then there is status that is bad. So meaning I think good is no default, but default. And since it's R and they know a bit of R, in R indices start with one. So here it means that one is good and two is bad. And uh, the same with home. So one means rent, two means owner, three means uh, brief, um, I think it's private, then ignore, parents, and other. So parents live with parents, other, I don't know, something else. And we have five variables like that. So now let's see how we can translate this R code into Python, how we can translate these numbers into strings. So let's start with status. And for that, we can use the map method for series. And what map is doing, so it takes in a dictionary. And here in this dictionary, we map every value from the original data frame to some new value. So for example, for one, we say it's okay. For two, it's default. That's actually, I think there is also zero. Yeah, so there is zero. So let's say for zero, it's un unknown. So I'm not sure how R exactly deals with zeros. But uh, let's treat this as unknown. And then we get a data frame like that. Here, now we simply write it back to status. Now, if we look at our data frame, this is what we get. So we get the status, and now it's not a number. It is uh, a string. We have some text here. So let's make it a bit nicer. So status values, well, this in a dictionary. Status values, um, yeah, just format a little bit like that. Now we will use the same code for, for changing home, for changing marital status, for changing records and job. Actually, if you did the homework, homework for week four, when we were talking about evaluating binary classification models, this is the homework. And we already used this data set. And uh, here we had some preparation. And uh, I said, uh, I wrote here that uh, we will talk about this, uh, this data set a bit later. And now it happens. So yeah, we're on week six and uh, we are using this data set now. And uh, let me just copy this. So I don't want to type it. So there's a lot of uh, code here. So we already did, we process status. Now we do the same with um, home, digital status, records and job. 
So for this, if we look at this so home, the rent is one, owner is two, private is three, and yeah, one, two, three. So basically we translate that R code into pandas. Let's execute that. And now we have um, all the categorical variables nicely decoded back to strings. So now it's easier for us to make sense what's going on here. And then the numerical variables like seniority, time, age, expenses, income, and so on. We're not doing anything with them. Uh, the other thing we saw here was uh, missing values, so we can now deal with them. Let's first take a look at all these numerical variables using this describe method. So that describes um, what we have in the data set, like all these statistics, like mean, uh, max, uh, the average value, and then percentiles. And yeah, it's hard to see here, so let's round it. And when we round, we see that income, assets, and debt have these large numbers as max values. So what we can do now, we can replace these numbers with NAs. So these are actually missing numbers. So we can say, okay, this number actually means that this number is missing. And then later we'll decide what to do with these missing numbers. So we have three columns that uh, have these missing values. I think I first will show you how to actually replace, and then we will do a loop to the frame uh, income. So this is where we want to place this. So if we look at, look at max here, so here the max is this high number. So what we want to do is we want to replace, uh, replace nines with an A. So here to replace, this is what we want to replace, uh, the value we want to replace, and value is what we want it to replace with. So in our case, it's uh, not number. And here now, if we look at max of this thing, it is not uh, nines anymore. So this is how we replace uh, something with something else. So this is similar to map in a way, but uh, it's just for one number. We can do this in a loop now or see in, we have three columns like that. So one is income, then assets, assets in and debt. So what we want to do is we want to now access this uh, column and we want to replace this and try to back the results. So this should be it. Now let's rerun this. So copy this, let me rerun it. And now we see that these nines are gone now. So the, uh, we don't have them anymore. And remember, we also looked at the status variable and we saw that there are zeros, meaning missing values there as well. So let's see again, status. So we have this one unknown. So this is pretty useless for us. So what we are interested in, in OK and default values. So we're interested in cases of when customers defaulted and when customers were fine. And this, it's not clear what to do with this. So we can simply remove this from our data set. So we're interested in all records that are not unknown, which is OK and default. And this is how we can filter this out. Somewhere here, there's this record that we removed. And somewhere here, the index um, jumps one record. So it's like, for example, 50 and then 52 immediately because one record is removed. So I don't like this. This is like, you don't have to do this, but uh, I want to keep it sequential just to have less confusion. If we need to do some debugging later, uh, we will not need to do this uh, debugging in this session, but this is just a habit I have. So let's do that. So what else we wanted to do? So we also wanted to do train validation test split here. So let's do that. You already you have done this multiple times by now. So from circuit learn model selection input train uh, test split. And then what we do is we first uh, split our data frame. So we leave aside 20%. Uh, Let's select some random state, I don't know, 11. Uh, here the result is data frame full uh, train and test. And we repeat one more time. We get data frame train and data frame validation. We split the full train data set. Here we take 25%, okay, something like that. Data frame three. So this is how our data frame now looks like so let's reset the index so and i'll do this for all three data frames for validation as well testing 
uh, the last thing I want to do is remove the default variable from the data frames. So even before removing, so first um, it is train status. It's text because we encoded or decoded the number into text, but now we want to turn it into a number, but to a different number. So previously it was zero, one, two. So now all the default ones we want to turn into ones, right? So one, if it's default, we want to have a one and zero otherwise. So from that, what we do is, so for all the records that are default, they are true. And then we want to turn this true into a number. So basically the same as we did in uh, week three, I think. I think we're interested in values. So this would be our Y train. And we will do the same for validation and test. Of course, we need to replace it here. And finally, what we want to do is we want to remove the default variable from our data frames. Validation and test. Okay. So now this is how our data frames look like. So we don't have the status column here anymore. We have all these features. And yeah, let's use them for training a decision tree. So we prepared our data set, we decoded the numbers back into strings, we worked a bit with missing values, we decoded them again from nines, a bunch of nines to NAs, uh, missing numbers. Uh, we did the split and now we're ready to train a model and we will do that in the next lesson. See you soon.